Hi you guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is April and today I have a highly, highly recommended, recommended, requested video on how to gain weight as a petite woman. So I know I have done a bunch of videos on fat loss and body recomposition where I'm telling you guys how to lose fat and gain muscle as a petite, but there's also petite women who are trying to purely gain weight, trying to gain lots of muscle and get that curvaceous look to kind of go from skinny and um, thin to gaining muscle, which is, aside from aesthetics, extremely healthy because it increases your metabolism and having muscle allows you to age better, feel better, you're stronger in your life, you can carry your groceries on your own. I could go on forever. So today I'm gonna teach you how to gain weight, specifically if you are a hard gainer, meaning you have trouble gaining weight as a petite woman. Okay, you guys, so we're just gonna jump into this. I'm gonna try to give you a nice plan with a bunch of steps, things that need to happen from a scientific standpoint in order for you to actually gain muscle. So the first one is that you need to be eating at maintenance calories or surplus calories. What this means is that the number of calories that you're consuming needs to be equal to the number of calories you're expending or more than so that you can tell your body to gain weight. Now, of course, when you say you wanna gain weight, you're not trying to increase your fat tissue, your fat deposits, you're not trying to increase your fat, we're trying to put on lean muscle, right? So there are specific ways that I want you to go about a bulk, what would be called eating in a surplus or eating at your maintenance level and training in a higher frequency um, so that you can stimulate, stimulate your muscles and gain muscle. Uh, so when it comes to nutrition, this is going to be the number one thing that is determining whether or not you're gaining weight or losing weight as a petite woman. Let's start with how you even know what your maintenance calories are or your surplus calories, right? I recommend you just going on Google and typing in TDEE calculator, total daily energy expenditure calculator, and see what comes up. You'll have to put in your weight, your height, that's where height comes in, and your sex and your goal and they'll usually ask you if you want to eat a deficit, that would be for losing weight, maintenance level, or surplus. I recommend doing maintenance level or surplus. Surplus would be a more aggressive weight gain approach at maintenance level. I do believe that you can still, and it's scientifically proven, you can still put on weight at your maintenance level depending on how you're eating and how you are working out and how many days a week. So your first step is to figure out what your maintenance calories are. Your second step is to figure out how you're going to eat more to support your weight gain goals. All comes down to planning ahead, you guys. I really, really, really can't emphasize this enough. You need to be getting more protein up. Protein, amino acids, these are the things that make up your muscles. When we want to grow our muscles and stimulate our muscles, we have to make sure that we are getting the building blocks of those muscles in the form of protein. So for petite women, a lot of times I get the question, how much do I need? How much protein do I really need? And it's going to come down to you as a person on an individual level, I can't prescribe the number of grams of protein that you should have because that wouldn't be responsible and it's very different for every individual. However, I personally eat about one gram of protein per pound of body weight. So if I was 120 pounds, I would have 120 grams of protein. Now, this may not be right for you. Like I'm saying, you might need 0.8 grams of protein per pound of body weight. So I would, I would suggest that you play with this if you're currently having only 50 grams of protein per day and you're 120 pounds or 110 pounds, that's probably not enough. Of course, I don't know your medical history. I don't know where you currently are eating, what your dietary uh, requirements are, your goals, all of these things. However, you probably need to increase your protein and there are great ways to do this in a lean and clean way. So you can increase your protein intake by eating more lean meats, so lean ground turkey, you can have chicken breast, you can have salmon, fish is an amazing way to get lean protein, shrimp, salmon, cod, white fish, what else? This is, these are all of the meats that I eat to hit my protein goal. So I make sure that I have about 30 grams of protein per, per meal and maybe at the end of the day I have a protein supplement, something to get it up into the 120 grams of protein. So this is the most important thing is that you're, if you want to gain muscle, you need to be eating a little bit more protein, especially if you're working out. Which brings me to my second point, the workouts. You cannot build muscle if you're not working out. 
You can gain weight if you're not working out. If you want to just gain weight as a petite, you will gain it in the form of fat if you're eating a surplus but not exercising. So the second most important thing is that you are engaged and working on your body in the gym. My recommendation is that you are following a weightlifting program. You're lifting weights four to five days per week. And I would also recommend doing a training split as a petite woman. I don't always recommend training splits because they can really stimulate your muscles. And for women who are not trying to, women who are already at a good weight, if they're trying to lose weight and they don't want to put on bulky muscle, I would not tell them to eat in a surplus and lift, uh, do a training split, meaning they're doing arms, just arms one day, just legs another day. However, if you want muscle and you have no muscle right now as a petite woman and you really need to stimulate your muscles, you should follow a training split such as, let's see what I have here. You could do two leg days. So that could be a quad and glute focus day and then a hamstring and glute focus day. You could have, that could be Monday, we'll say. Tuesday will be back and shoulders. So you're really going in there, stimulating the muscles in your back, working on your shoulders. On Wednesday, you could have a total body hit day just to keep your cardiovascular health up. And hit doesn't necessarily decrease your muscle. If you're doing long, uh, sorry, low intensity steady state cardio like LIS, it's called LIS, on the treadmill, that is gonna, it's gonna by nature, it's catabolic breakdown muscle on the treadmill. But if you wanna get a little cardio in, hit is a great way to continue to build muscle while also shedding some fat. So we said Monday would be glutes and hamstrings. And that leaves Thursday, you could do glutes and quads. Friday, you could do chest, your pecs, triceps, back your arms, and your biceps. So this would be a great training split for someone who's trying to really stimulate their muscles as a petite woman and gain curves, gain strength, gain muscle, while you're also eating at your maintenance level or higher in a surplus, and you're making sure that you're getting enough lean sources of protein um, in your diet. Okay, step three, limit your low intensity steady state cardio. If you're a petite woman and you have no muscle tone, I mean, everyone has muscle, but if you want to get more and you feel like you don't have a lot, I would not recommend doing hours of cardio. Most petite women do not need this anyways. I would not get on the treadmill or the Stairmaster or the bike and do excessive amounts of cardio. This is because this process is breaking down muscle tissue in your body as well as fat. But if you want to have the best chances of increasing your muscle mass, then I would not do this much cardio. I wouldn't do any cardio at all, really. Step four, progressive overload. So progressive overload is the principle in fitness that states that your body adapts to the demands that you put on it. So the more, the heavier you lift, the stronger your body will grow, hence why it'll get more muscle. Of course, I want you guys to progress your weights in the safest way possible and always be sure that your form is correct before you progress. Make sure you can finish all of the reps in a given set before you progress your weights. However, progressive overload is going to be key to building muscle. If you just lift the same weights every day forever, you'll never stimulate the muscles because your muscles will be adjusted. So make sure you write down your weights. This is the biggest tip. Write down the weights you do for each of your training days on a piece of paper or on a sticky note on your phone. And each week, take a look, perform the exercise with the same weight, but every four weeks, make sure you're incrementally increasing these weights whether it's by a few pounds, five pounds, just make sure that every four to six weeks you are trying to make gains, you're trying to increase the load. And along with the progressive overload, when you have your split, your split, your training split, try different exercises. Not everybody reacts the same way to certain exercises. Some people do better with hip thrusts to stimulate the glutes. Most people do well with hip thrusts to stimulate glutes. Other people need to really focus on um, more glute activation before they get into that. So really just try different exercises. Think about the muscle you're using. You want to feel the contraction. You really want to feel yourself working and stimulating the muscle. Another great way to do this is to just go slow and really try to feel that contraction in the muscle. Okay, step five is to also eat your carbs and your fats. So I said you need to eat enough protein, but it's a whole diet here. It's a whole picture holistically. And I know that I have seen with my clients, some petite women who are hard gainers are a little bit afraid of eating carbs. In fact, many people are afraid of eating carbs, but carbs are the key to gaining your muscle as well. You need to eat enough carbs so that when you go to work out in the gym, 
you're not burning your muscle on your workouts. That would be the opposite goal of what you have, right? So try to pad extra carbs around your workouts. So before your workouts and after your workouts to make the most use of those carbs towards building muscle. Otherwise, if you go and do fasted workouts, if your goal is to gain muscle and you're going in and you know, you're not, you haven't eaten anything in hours, your body doesn't have that much energy to turn to, doesn't have glucose in the bloodstream from carbohydrates. It's just gonna turn maybe to your muscle and start to break down muscle tissue, which is the opposite of what you want. So remember you need carbs and you need fats also to increase your muscle size to grow your muscle tissues. That being said, if you're eating in a surplus or maintenance and you're trying to gain muscle, it is completely in inevitable that you will gain a little bit of fat along the way. This is just, every bodybuilder knows this, everyone in the fitness world knows, if you are gaining muscle, you're also gaining a little bit of fat. So if you're starting to gain weight as a petite woman, you're seeing muscle come in, but you're also noticing that you're feeling a little bit larger than you used to, this is all a mindset, this is all something you've gotta be ready for. Because yeah, you're trying to gain weight, and it's gonna take a little while, and you're gonna gain a little bit of fat with that, and that is completely normal. After you've gained some muscle mass, you can, if you want to lose the fat, go on cutting back the calories a little bit and start to shed off some of the fat, try to maintain as much mus muscle as possible. But whenever you eat in a surplus, you gain a little bit of fat along with the muscle you gain, and the same goes for a deficit. Whenever you eat in a deficit, you're going to lose fat, but you're also going to lose a little bit of muscle. This is also why it takes bodybuilders and people who've been, you know, physique models years to build the physique they want because they're increasing their calories, building muscle, and then they go through a cut, shut off the fat, but they lose a little muscle, a little bit of muscle. So they're going back and forth, kind of getting closer and closer and closer to that ultimate physique. Also why you cannot get that physique in one month or three months even. It takes years of that process. Of course, we aren't bodybuilders or we're not trying to be models. We're just trying to feel good and be strong in our skin. So you can do that by increasing your calories, lifting heavier, and just making sure you're really stimulating the muscles, getting your carbs, like everything I already said already. Okay, the last step, and this kind of feeds into this, what I was saying was, after you've put on all this muscle, you will have increased your metabolism because it takes more calories to burn muscle, sorry, it takes more calories to maintain muscle than it does fat. So at this point, congrats, you have gained muscle, you've raised your metabolism, and at this point you need to eat a little bit more calories actually to sustain your muscle. So you're going to be increasing your caloric threshold. At this point, like I said, this is the point where if you want to lose a little bit of fat, it will be very easy to because you will not be eating 1300 calories anymore as a petite woman. You'll be closer to 1800 or 2000, and then you can drop 200 calories, lower your carbs a little bit, and always keep the protein the same. And then you'll see fat come off and you will not feel like you're dieting. This is a great way to lose fat. This is something that's really recommended because first you get your metabolism up before you try to cut any calories. But like I said, you guys just wanna gain weight, so the first step is to do all the things I already talked about. Make sure your nutrition is clean and comes from mostly single ingredient sources and that you're really consistent and you're working on yourself in the gym every day. And that's my best advice. This is a pretty foolproof way to gain muscle. This is what everyone does who wants to gain muscle. The most important thing and the biggest challenge for you is going to be the mindset because even though you say you want to gain muscle, you are going to notice changes in the mirror that make you feel different. You're going to see yourself getting larger and I know that that's what you want, but whenever we see our body change, it's a little bit of a shock and for me too. But you just gotta commit to the process, stay with it, and I promise you guys, you'll get there, it'll feel good. And of course, if you ever have any questions, you can reach out to me. I coach women through this all the time. So I hope this was helpful. Helpful. I'm like not good with my words today. I hope this was helpful for you guys. And of course, if you have any other requested videos, always ask, I will always make them. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and support me and petite women and subscribe for more. And I will chat with you guys soon. Bye.